it's always nice when Christians admit in some kind of public forum their unwarranted, entirely incoherent biases. A couple years ago, we had Lobar Bill, Christian excuses extraordinaire William Lane Craig, confessing that he lowers the epistemic bar for Christianity because the message is so fantastic, he'd believe if there was only a a million to one chance it was true. Our best estimates suggest that perhaps as many as 100 billion humans have lived here on planet Earth, and not one of them has risen from the dead. That would make Bill's already hopeless one in a million estimate off by a factor of... a hundred thousand? You might, you might have to check me on that. I, I didn't get the math gene. Cameron Bertuzzi from the Capturing Christianity channel recently let it slip that he bifurcates his mind into regular Cameron and apologetics Cameron, with one of them being infinitely dumber than the other. Enter Justin Brierly, the guy who tried so hard to appear unbiased on his unbelievable show doing something very similar. He's written a new book called The Surprising Rebirth of Belief in God and then confessed in yet another public forum that he has no data to back up this bald-faced, unwarranted assertion at the very heart of his thesis. I can't back that up. Because who needs facts and statistics when you have a, a fantastic, uplifting story to tell, right? What evidence is there for this surprising rebirth? I think that there's been a real shifting of the atmosphere in recent years and the image I use, if you don't mind me being really gauche and actually showing the title <laughs> of the book, it's a, it's a wave on the front and there's this famous poem by Matthew Arnold, Dover Beach, which has this well-known stanza about the melancholy long withdrawing roar of the sea of faith, which he wrote about 150 years ago and arguably that's only increased as secularism and, you know, technology science has sort of taken the place effectively in many people's minds of, of religion and faith. But yeah, I, I just became convinced after hosting lots of debates between Christians and atheists over the years that actually something had shifted in about the last three or four years. And I just wondered whether Matthew Arnold's Sea of Faith might be ready to come back in again, because as, as um, Doug, Douglas Murray told me when I had him on for a conversation, he said the thing about the Sea of Faith is it doesn't just go out, it could come back in again. That's the point of tides. And so... I was just noticing more and more people like Douglas Murray and others saying more and more sympathetic things about Christianity. Um, I was noticing people that you've already mentioned, people like Paul Kingsnorth having these quite surprising adult conversions to Christianity. And although these are all anecdotal, I did feel that something had changed in the atmosphere. Certainly the new atheism had waned in its influence mm. and popularity. Um, we got and any, and are there any stats? If we're going to have a kind well, of this reason, is, this is, this is the thing, and the only stats I quote in the book are the ones that are contrary to my thesis. You know why that is? Can you can you guess? Why would he quote only stats that run contrary to the entire thesis and and title of his book? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? It's because there are no statistics which confirm the thesis of his book. There. There is no surprising rebirth of belief in God, not in the West. Yes, there are actually, <laughs> we know well that the decline in church going, the decline in religiosity, the rise of the so-called nuns, people who don't claim any religious affiliation. So that's, that's all out there. We can all see the statistics about church going in the West. Of course, Disraeli said it best. There are lies, damned lies, and statistics. So who needs them, right? One of my habits now is ignoring all data. Look for Justin Brierley's upcoming books, The Surprising Rebirth of Bloodletting and The Surprising Rebirth of Alchemy, coming soon to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and a Christian science reading room near you. The essence of Justin's argument can be seen in this clip. I started to see the emergence of similar public intellectuals drawing large audiences, but being far more sympathetic to Christianity than Dawkins and Harris and Dennett and Hitchens and so on. And so that, you know, that the preeminent preeminent example is is um, Jordan Peterson, who uh, Alex has only very recently interviewed. And, uh, and he's a good example of someone who was in the same kind of intellectual milieu as that. 
having big arena conversations and debates with Sam Harris when he kind of came onto the scene, but with a very different way of looking at faith. So different, in fact, that Jordan couldn't even forthrightly answer the question, do you believe in God? Not without an absolutely grueling degree of clarification. You know, so people say to me, what do you, do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? And you say as the questioner, well, we already know what all those things mean, yep. except belief in God. And I think, no, if we're going to get down to the fundamental brass tacks, we don't really know what any of those things mean. This is the kind of robust, full-throated belief in God Justin is all fired up about. Those wacky public intellectuals, right? Who could possibly take an already banal idea like a generic belief in God and, and make it even more so? But let's be clear here. Folks like Justin aren't necessarily fans of faith or belief in God per se. They're not thrilled about the, the rise of Islam, for instance. In fact, the desire for people to return to Christianity seems largely directed at using the faith as a, a sledgehammer against Islam. And what could possibly go wrong there, right? In their quest to fight hellfire with hellfire, they've embraced our recently converted friend, Ayan Hersili, who in her coming out essay, talked less about her deeply held belief in the resurrection than the need to push back against the woke, Islam, and the worldwide movement towards authoritarianism. Because nothing says anti-authoritarianism like an all-powerful God watching your every move day and night ruling with an iron fist without any regard whatsoever for the will of the people, human rights, or our prohibitions against cruel and unusual punishment. Folks like Justin want people to return to Christianity because they wrongly believe that the Enlightenment, which created Western modernity, was a Christian endeavor and cannot survive Christianity's reappraisal brought about by the Enlightenment. So instead of simply embracing the Enlightenment directly with its critique of religion, they embrace its imagined broker, despite the hell on earth Europe came to be after a thousand years of Christian rule. Justin Brierley has done something truly extraordinary. He has tapped into the very heart of faith, and Christianity in particular. 1. Require no evidence. 2. Ignore the facts and statistics as you know them, or at the very least, bend them to your will. C. Give people a story of hope, however unwarranted or ridiculous. And finally, embrace your faith as a weapon against those with whom you disagree. Voltaire and Montesquieu would be so proud. Once again, I'm me. Thanks for watching.